So that's really what the capstone represents. It represents the application of your core courses on an integrated problem. Secondarily, we're a professional school, which means you know you're going to be looking for a job someday and, and applying for these uh, these uh, these uh, core skills. Uh, but it's going to be in the real world, right? So you take courses, right? Sometimes you have home academic assignments. But at some point, you know, you'd like to get a test run to see if you can do this, especially for people who may not have worked. And so the second aspect, in, in addition to integration, is application to real world problems. So that's really what the capstone is. Integration of your uh, core curriculum and application to a real world problem. And there's a variety of different capstones, as you'll see today. Some of them are group oriented, some are really consulting, some are individual papers, but they all have that same basic ingredients. So that's the main thing I wanted to say, and it's really the culmination of your curriculum. So it's something we take very seriously. Uh, you're going to be asked to do things new ways, right? Typically, it's one subject, now you've got to integrate. And if it's real world, you're going to have to be flexible, right? In terms of your time, if you're working with a client, you're going to have to be somewhat flexible in that. So it's an important part of our curriculum. We expect a, a good job, right? Because that was your first test case. Uh, and so that's, that's why we're holding a session like this on the capstone. So there's some smaller additional things. Uh, you, know, you take it as an MPA when you're graduating as well as the MAs. MPAs by course, you can take it a semester early, but then you can take the courses next semester, so that's, that's irrelevant. Um, another important point in the handout here, just takeaways, uh, is that if you're going to do the individual research paper as your capstone, uh, you need to speak to Professor Yi uh, and have your paper basically outlined uh, six weeks prior to the next semester starting. So I'm not sure what you can say about that. So there's lots more materials on the website. You can download those. I'm not going to take too much time uh, talking about those. Uh, really here, what we're doing is uh, giving you a chance to, to, to meet the, the professors who are providing the capstone courses. So I'm going to give them their time. And then later, after they're done, uh, then we'll take any additional questions you might have. Dr. Moulton, would you like to begin? That would be great, yes. Okay. <laughs> so we're doing the policy innovation and strategy in the nonprofit sector capstone. Um, this actually started off as a class looking at policy issues related to nonprofit organizations and has evolved into a capstone. So over the past few years, we've affected this course as a capstone. Um, and it's a, a combination of a bit of content on nonprofit uh, sector issues. So unlike nonprofit management, some of you may be taking the nonprofit management course. It's not a prerequisite to take this capstone. Um, it's fine if you've taken nonprofit management. It won't overlap. We don't duplicate. I'm focused more on policy issues um, that, that affect nonprofit organizations. And so you could be deciding you want to go into government, but you know that when you go into government, you're going to be working with nonprofit organizations. So you may have an interest in it that way. Um, or you may actually want to work with nonprofit organizations more directly. Um, any of those things, or you just are interested in a topic. Um, for example, I've had students that are interested in health. Um, hospitals many times are nonprofit organizations, and so because the, the, the policy area that you're interested in, um, by definition, it involves nonprofit organizations. That's another um, motivation I often have see for students wanting to take this capstone. Um, there's kind of four big buckets of areas that students often focus on. Um, and actually, the course content, so I, I structure it where it's up, up front, we have about four weeks of content where I actually give you kind of a deep dive into some of the policy issues, the pressing policy issues facing nonprofit organizations. And each week, we take on one of those four issues. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's, it's, they're kind of provocative issues where there's really no right or wrong answer, but we start really kind of getting into those four big bucket issues. Um, and then after that, you select a topic area of your own choosing that you're going to run with and write a white paper on for the capstone. Um, oftentimes, I also come up with a list of clients who may have um, ideas about white papers that they're looking for, and I can share some examples of what students have done in the past if that's helpful, um, so that you can get a sense of what those look like. Um, but they tend to be for associations, so AmeriCorps or um, Ohio Association of Nonprofit Organizations, something that's a hospital association, something of interest to their membership, for example, would be a topic you might write a white paper that's of interest to their members. Um, and so it becomes a document that most students are pretty proud of, that they then can include with their CDs or their resumes when they go on the job market. We turn it into something that's very polished. It's not like an academic paper, it's, a, it's truly a white paper that you would want to uh, post on a website or be able to bring with you um, if you go on a, a, a job search. Um, so the four areas that we focus on, 
Um, one is nonprofit tax exemption legal status or mission challenges. Might sound boring. I actually love this topic this is where we look at the legal status of the organizations and um, IRS issues that might relate to nonprofits. We look at philanthropy, so we get into donor and fundraising issues there. Um, so I've had students do things on um, different types of solicitations, whether they be um, so paid solicitors that are paid to raise funds on behalf of a nonprofit organization. I had a student last year do something for the Attorney General's office, looking at paid solicitors and how much money they actually get um, on behalf of the nonprofit and kind of investigating some issues with that. So using some data that the AG's office had. Um, the third one is about earned income strategies and social enterprise. Um, some years this is really hot and I have a lot of students that want to do this and other years. Last year was actually pretty light on this side, um, but looking at earned income ventures and nonprofits that are earning it revenues and how, how that those types of policies factor in. Um, and the last one is related to political advocacy or, or um, community engagement. So this is looking at lobbying. Um, so I have some students that are really interested in the advocacy groups, advocacy nonprofits, looking at lobbying rules, lobbying regulations. The person that did hospitals, this was of interest to them. They were working, um, trying to figure out about some changes to policies that would affect hospitals and were really interested in that kind of political advocacy lobbying side. So we spend four weeks each week diving into one of these topics and then students run with one of those um, applied to a specific set of data that I help the students. Some students come with data already. I would say about half the time or more like three quarters of the time they don't and I help them find data. I also have data. so. Um, I have data from the IRS on nonprofit tax filings, and there's all kinds of interesting information. It sounds boring, but there's interesting information to be found in that um, that you can look at. And then the AG's office has data. There's other sources of data that we can work with to try to identify what data might work for you. You do use data. Um, you don't do any kind of regression analysis in my capstone. It's more of using the data to present some descriptive findings that you could then use to communicate in a white paper. So learning how to present that information through a white paper format. So I think that's um, that's the main stuff that I wanted to communicate. And then we also have a policy form. I've had a policy form for the past three years, and a couple of the other capstones have participated in it in the past couple of years, which is a great experience. I think the students love it, where we are able to have students, and you might have attended it actually last year. Um, you're presenting your work. I bring in experts um, related to your topic. Sometimes it's the clients themselves. So like the Dave Thomas Foundation, somebody did something for them last year. They came in, um, the Women's Fund, they've done work for them, they come in and you're presenting it then to a real audience of, of experts um, who then engage with you in discussion about it. Uh, so it provides a nice outlet. It's a nice evening. Um, we have pizza and refreshments, um, and then we invite other students to come as well if they'd like to, um, to attend the event. So, yeah. Should I take any questions or should I if, stop? If you have, because I know you have I do have to run and get my, my daughter. Any so. other questions? <laughs> any questions about the capstone? And I'm happy to share. Questions. The syllabus with you from from last year. If any of you would like to take a look at it, um, I'll probably be tweaking it again this year. But I'm happy to share with you last year's syllabus if that's helpful, um, or even some of the topics I have, like the topics that students have done in the past. I can share that. We've also posted many of the caption syllabi oh, on right. our website. So if you go to the current student tab um, on the left hand side, there's sample syllabi as an example. So you can click that. Is link this one there? Yes, I okay. believe so. And if not, you can let us know, and we'll make sure. To get Good. That would be a much better strategy than getting 70 emails. Yes. So. I was I like that. <laughs> yeah. Other questions or concerns or thoughts? Okay. No? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Mike. You said it was a class. Do you know yeah. if there's still uh, some of the material and readings lists it, when it was a class out there somewhere? Yeah. So, a... yeah, and actually, the syllabus that's out there has the readings and materials. So, that's the one, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, that, that one actually, so the first four weeks, um, I need to make sure you have the most up to date one. So I do top load it. So it used to be that I spread the materials out through the whole semester, but then it, I wanted students to be able to focus on their white papers only for the second part of the semester. So now I front load it so that the first four weeks have some content and then the, the last part is simply working on the white paper. Um, and that was based on feedback I got from students in the past that you know it's really hard to have content, new content while we're trying to work on our own white papers. So now it's front loaded so you have content in the first four weeks and then we work on white papers the rest of the time. Okay, my name is Amanda Gerth and I'm teaching the public management uh, capstone, which is strategy for public organizations. Um, I apologize in advance, like Professor Moulton, I have to leave early um, to actually go teach this class. Um, so I'm happy to take questions, um, but also if you have further questions for me, you know, feel free to email. Um, Gerth.1, very easy. Um, 
Okay, so the um, strategy course for public organizations uh, really provides um, an integrated strategic perspective on how to manage organizations. Um, in this course, I have you take the perspective of a senior level manager in an organization. With that perspective, I want you to diagnose uh, management problems. Uh, and not just diagnose them, in some ways that can be the easy part, right? Finding the problems. Um, but then, I want you to begin to think about how to solve those. So begin to think about resolving very complex organizational problems. So we use traditional <coughs> strategic management techniques to do that. Um, so in that way, I not only am integrating material that you've learned throughout your uh, time here at the Glenn School, but also introducing some new material to you as well. Um, <coughs> to do this, um, we draw on material from your previous classes. Uh, but we also use case studies um, to begin to help you understand how to diagnose um, and resolve some of these problems. Um, I also bring in guest speakers uh, to the class as well. And one of the reasons I do that is I want to introduce you to uh, leaders from uh, you know, public sector organizations. Uh, Tracy Plout, she's the director of um, mental health uh, services in Ohio. Uh, is one example, um, and also uh, folks from the nonprofit sector um, to give you that perspective. We primarily focus on public, public organizations, but I also um, talk a bit about uh, nonprofit organizations as well. Um, so, if uh, so, if for example you are sort of less interested in policy issues and more interested in management issues, um, we can work to satisfy that in this course. Um, the primary deliverable for the course is a strategy document. And this is a different type of assignment than you've likely been presented with um, elsewhere. Uh, so the document provides a comprehensive picture of an organization of your choosing. Um, so it's best if you pick a public organization or a nonprofit organization you have some familiarity with. Perhaps the organization that you uh, analyze in 60-50, a number of students utilize that organization. And if not that, I say, well, then pick an organization that you'd like to work for and want to learn more about. Um, so what, uh, what we will do in the strategy document is to begin to um, facilitate some strategy uh, decisions um, and align uh, some of those decisions with the organization to help drive performance. Um, so you say, how are we going to do that? Well, it's essentially a consulting project. You're not required to deliver the document to the organization that you choose, although many students end up um, very proud of their work and doing that. Um, the document looks and feels different, as I said. Uh, I want it modeled after industry reports. I want there to be a one-page tight executive summary. I want there to be visual displays of information. I want it, uh, because essentially those are the two things that moving forward in your careers as senior decision makers are going to look at. Uh, so I want to give you uh, the tools to be able to create those kinds of documents uh, to help uh, senior managers make the decisions uh, that they need to within the organizations that you're going to work. Um, in terms of What's difficult for students in my class, this is one thing that Professor Landsbergen uh, suggested that we speak about. Uh, I would say that the strategy document, because it is not an academic term paper, and we have been asking you for those kinds of deliverables um, for the last year and a half, can be a little difficult just to transition into a more business style of writing um, and to transition into using the kinds of tools that you'll need to get across uh, visually the data that I'd like you to, to um, like you to present. Um, but in that way, I provide examples. We'll work with you um, in doing that. Um, so I'm Sally Sedaf, and as uh, Dave said, I'm new to the Glenn School. I'm coming from the University of California, San Diego, and I was at the University of Chicago before that. And um, I'm an economist by training. Most of my work has to do with running experiments with organizations. I've worked a lot with schools, but I've also worked with uh, for-profit companies and not-for-profits. And so 
my class is actually, rather than focusing on a topic, is going to focus on a methodology, which is experimentation. I think, um, you know, you've learned in your previous courses that, are, that experiments are the gold standard for you know, <coughs> understanding the impact of a policy, but actually, actual experiments have been pretty rare in policy, so you're usually measuring something against, well, if we could have run an experiment, what would it have looked like, and how close is this to what our ideal experiment would look like? But actually now, more and more, what we're seeing is an explosion of actual experimentation, and more and more policymakers are demanding experiments, actually. So I see this in education a lot. If you look at something like Race for the Top, there's a lot of demand for programs to be evaluated using experiments, or the Affordable Care Act. They want to see um, policies evaluated using experimental methods. And a lot of organizations are just taking this, this on themselves. So a lot of utilities, for example, in energy are running experiments around how to get um, customers to use less energy or adopt um, energy efficient products. You probably actually, on your bill, if you've ever seen a smiley face, you're in an experiment. So you may be in experiments without realizing it. A lot of charities, when you receive solicitations from charities in the mail, that's often part of an experiment to try to understand how do we get people to donate more. People, you've probably heard about the Obama campaign. There's a lot of experimentation to figure out how to increase voter turnout, how to, again, increase donations. So, this is becoming widely used in a large number of um, policy areas. And so what we'll do in this course is really understand what is experimentation, how is it being used in different policy areas, and really to try to get idea, your ideas going for yourself, you know, in an area that I'm interested in, how could I take a policy question and address it using an experiment? So we'll go through a lot of examples. And in that, we'll also focus on how do you evaluate experiments. So even if you never run an experiment in your life, probably in anything you do, you're going to run across experimental evidence. And it's going to be important to understand how to weigh that against the other factors you're looking at to make policy decisions. So we'll start, at, like I said, with a lot of examples. And what you'll be responsible for is choosing one paper to read an example, a study run using an experiment. And you know, I suggest you do it in an area if you're interested in, and I have a long list, and if I, you know, something you're interested in isn't on there, we can work together. But as I said, um, you know, there are now examples of using it to get people to exercise more, lose weight, study longer, pay their taxes, donate to charity. I mean, basically anything you can think of, I think there's probably an experiment out, out there. Um, and then, so that would be the first part of the course. And then the second part of the course, you'll actually start thinking about designing and running your own experiment. And you know, with experimentation, it's really about learning by doing. So you really get your hands dirty. And here you'll work. You can work as a group if you choose to. Um, and you know, you think about a policy question: What's been done so far? Where there might be some holes in our knowledge, and how an experiment can address that. And then you'll design an experiment and think about how you would actually implement it. So the course will really focus on the practicalities of how do you run an experiment in an organization? You know, how do you pitch it to people that might not really know what experimentation is or be a bit scared about it? I've worked with teachers in schools who get very nervous when you use the word experimentation. So, you know, really thinking about that, thinking about how you run it within the constraints of organizations, what might be some concerns about fairness or um, unintended consequences and so on. So we'll think a lot more about that. Let's focus on things like the statistics and the you know, scary stuff. But if you want that, I'm happy to dive in. You know, But it, it's not going to be heavy on the statistics. You really don't need to know any statistics. I mean, of course, you guys all do know the statistics in your previous courses. But um, it's not going to be a really technical course in that sense. It's much more about um, thinking about how you can use this in a way that will help an organization. And again, I think it's about developing a skill that there's a lot of demand out there for, but a real shortage of. So I think it gives you a real advantage if you can go into an organization and say, you know, you really understand what this, this newfangled experimentation is. And I'm a behavioral economist, so another sort of theme of the course will be how behavioral economics has been especially used to try to move um, behavior. So if you've read things like economics or Nudge, these kinds of, will kind of bring in some popular examples that you might know about. Um, so the end product is, it's like a pitch, basically, that you would present to an organization. So you don't actually have to, you don't have to actually have connections to an organization and have to do this as a pitch. But the idea is you have sort of this pitch that you could bring into an organization if you had that opportunity. 
and it'll be accompanied by a document. But um, hopefully, we can get into Stephanie's policy forum because I think the most important thing is to be, to be able to communicate these ideas. And there will also be some opportunities to run some pilot experiments so you can actually see what it's like to get your hands dirty and really run an experiment on a small scale. Any questions? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hong Tao Yi. I'm going to teach this capstone, and the, the title of it is uh, Capstone for a Research Paper. And in this capstone, um, the general requirement is that you have to write a research paper, and, and that's it, right? <laughs> but um, the, the requirement is that this topic should be within the general uh, realm of public affairs, public policy. That, that's the only thing. And then you have to write a research paper according to the scientific standard that we have learned in grad school using uh, methods, theories uh, of public affairs and, and public policies. And um, um, generally, the, the topic is pretty open. You know, students interested in uh, whatever policy areas are encouraged to, to do their own research. And the, the goal is that I help you do what you like to do. And, and if you choose a topic, you have to talk to me. Uh, and I can help you, you know, define your research question, and then find available data sets, and then um, you know, finish a project that you want to do and you want to showcase while you are going to market and show that I can do um, this line of work. And you know, if you want to be a whatever policy analyst in, the, in one policy area, you can do this kind of capstone to show that I can do, uh, you know, do this in, in my future job. So um, the 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 format of the, uh, the the contents of the course is like this. So there's no substantive knowledge in this course. So there's nothing like um, you know specific things other than help you uh, how to write a paper. So basically, it will be about defining your research question, defining your uh, hypothesis or your research <laughs> questions, your context. And how to write a research review will help you, you know, you know, um, you can, you know, uh, integrate the literature and uh, write down your, you know, uh, c combine your literature with the testable hypothesis, and then help you analyze data and help you write a conclusion. And so, so that basically is a course about how to write a paper. And you know, throughout the course, you will be divided into groups. And then you know, your group uh, mates are going to help you uh, provide critiques, comments on your paper. And I'm, I'm my TA and I also are going to provide you feedbacks uh, throughout the course. And you got feedbacks, uh, you know, almost on a weekly basis regarding your status and your my expectations, etc. So it's going to be very, uh, very smooth. Uh, in the, your stress level is going, is going to be the same starting now. <laughs> because um, another thing I need to mention is uh, you have to talk to me within one month from now uh, to about your research question, what you want to study, and then we will work out a, work out a plan so that you will show significant progress by the end of the semester that you are okay to go to register for this course. Other than, otherwise, that would be a problem, right? So because we will have to do a significant amount of work at the beginning, that is, in this semester, before the, the start of next semester, so that you have a pretty solid database. You know, either in quantitative format, if you do regression-based analysis, or if you want to do a quantitative quantitative study, that is, if you want to conduct interviews, surveys, or case studies, then you have to have those preliminary materials ready, uh, ready to go before the beginning of the semester, so that your stress during the semester will be significantly reduced. So you are well prepared, so that in the, in the course, we will just discuss how to write a paper, how to analyze the data, how to make sure this is done correctly, rather than worrying about, you know, when the survey will be will be done, when the data will be ready, etc. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I always call this course as a garbage can course. So if you cannot find a suitable course for you, you can always go to me. I can help you work out the plan. But I would say that it's it's definitely a better course. Um, <laughs> so I I look forward to uh, see many of you in my course.
Um, I don't see that uh, happen very often. Typically, students uh, find uh, uh, second-hand data yeah. sources to conduct analysis. But sometimes students do, do uh, conduct surveys. I see like uh, three or four students in the last two years they did surveys or interviews. But but you don't have to do a very you know, large-scale survey. Right? You can you can do a small-scale survey, but it needs to be well designed to be implemented. And sometimes you can do interviews as well, right? So, but that's not typical, but it's doable. Um, but you have to think about your research questions and then go ahead and do it. So, but for those kind of uh, issues, and some students may extend into the semester, but I need to be sure that you can do it and finish it before I can sign off on your uh, consent sheet so that you can register for the course. If you don't get my approval, you'll not be able to register for the course. That's something you have to work on within the next month to get my approval to get into my class. If we need to make a public records request, how early do you suggest we do that if we want to put that into the individual research? Yeah, yeah, I should say that. You should do it now. You, I can talk to you if you need help with that. Okay. So there's an oral and a written component to every one of these capstones. How, how do you and uh, so how do you do the oral presentation? Do they have to present their papers in some way, or do you do it within the, the form, or how do you do that? Um, yeah, generally students are required to present their paper. So you have to write a paper. And then after, afterwards, you, you do a 15 minutes presentation in front of everyone. But in this class, you, you're going to do, go through two rounds of presentation. One round is within the class. That's just me. I'm going, I'm going to provide you feedbacks on your presentation, the slides, your style, and contents. And then you're going to present in front of everyone in the policy forum. So that one round of, you know, one more round is that I can pro provide you feedback on you know, your contents, whatever research you have done, and your, your styles. And then the second round is for you to show everybody you have done a very fabulous work that, that you, are, you should be proud of. Hi, my name is Josh Hawley. I'm an associate professor in the Glenn School, and I'll be teaching the capstone course with a focus on education policy in the spring. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the class so you can uh, decide if it's for you. The class is really uh, centrally focused on issues of state and local and to a certain degree federal um, uh, issues in, 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 in policy, in education policy. It's an area I've worked a lot in um, in my career. Um, I currently am director of the uh, Ohio Education Research Center. I have the privilege of working a great deal with different agencies in state government, including the governor's office and uh, the Ohio Department of Ed. And I've worked in the past with um, the World Bank, uh, UNICEF, uh, the Asian Development Bank, many other international organizations and governments. Um, my most recent kind of long-term engagement was uh, with the Russian uh, government uh, and some issues in vocational and technical education. So I've, I've had a broad range of experience internationally, but this class in particular is focusing on the domestic issues with education policy. We'll spend a few weeks at the beginning of the class getting to know kind of some of the theoretical traditions uh, in uh, education policy, some of the political, economic, psychological uh, theories that uh, help us understand education policy. We'll turn quickly to the systems uh, of education policy, the governmental systems, uh, the budgeting systems, the um, political uh, kind of nature uh, of education at the local level. And then the last uh, third of the class will we'll delve into some topical issues. Um, a couple of years ago when I did this, uh, the main issue really was kind of school improvement and race to the top and no child left behind. That's still pretty uh, prominent, especially in Ohio. Uh, we've also got a lot of interest right now in uh, third grade uh, literacy as a precondition for success in education and in workforce um, kind of success uh, of education programs. And that's an area that, that last area that's really central to my research uh, uh, kind of stream in, in my whole career. I've done a lot of research on uh, the workforce outcomes uh, of education. Um, we'll talk also about higher education uh, and workforce development in addition to K through 12 education. So those of you who are extremely interested 
in uh, kind of the roles of universities, uh, vocational schools, career and technical centers, uh, you're, 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 you, you will have an opportunity to address these interests. Your role in this class is to come up with a, with a capstone assignment. Um, and that capstone assignment uh, can really take many different forms. There's a standard uh, kind of paper format. Um, I've had uh, people do papers on Common Core. I've had people do uh, papers on early grade reading. I've had people do papers on universities uh, and their role in the world. Um, and I'm really open to any particular uh, uh, kind of education topic. There's a proviso, though. You have to be able to kind of find enough data to be able to do a good capstone. And you also have to be able to uh, connect with some uh, education professionals in the field uh, as a way to do some interviews uh, and uh, kind of uh, diagnostic uh, uh, interviews with them about the topic. So the education policy class is, uh, is, is both a content class, so you will get uh, readings and lectures on the materials, and you'll also get uh, the opportunity to complete a capstone. It's not an, uh, simply an, uh, a class where you're going to come and uh, kind of work uh, in a small group setting on your capstone. You will get uh, lectures and content on the topics in education policy. It's a great class, I think. Uh, I spend a lot of time. Uh, kind of building the materials and thinking hard about uh, the topics uh, that I think you'll enjoy and I will make every effort to uh, to ensure that you have a successful uh, capstone experience um, and that the whatever you prepare um, is a great preparation and a great demonstration of your uh, skills you've used and you've learned at the Glenn School uh, as part of your career here. So if you're interested in the class go ahead and register if you have questions you can contact me uh, and I look forward to meeting you, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there tonight. Take care. Hi, everyone. My name is Noah Dormady. I'm a faculty member here in the John Glenn School, and uh, I'm excited to be able to let you know that this coming spring term, uh, you'll have the option of enrolling in a capstone course on energy and environmental policy. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you tonight. Uh, I have an infant child at home, and uh, I'm watching him while my wife, who uh, is a history professor, is teaching. Uh, so I couldn't be here with you tonight, but uh, I'm glad to uh, at least be able to to send you this message uh, and give you a little bit of background uh, on what my plans are for the uh, capstone course coming up this next semester. Uh, energy is a growing industry. Energy and environmental policy are core focuses of the Ohio State University and many universities across the country. Uh, the energy sector is a growing sector specifically for jobs and a number of you have gone back to school to get a higher degree, a master's degree, with the focus of providing for your family and getting a better job. Uh, you're going to be facing stiff competition in the job market from foreign uh, students who've gone out and gotten degrees and, and their competitors for the same jobs as you are. And you're going to be com uh, competing against others who have gone back to school and also uh, who are entering the job market in the, this year and next year with, with advanced degrees. And so one of the ways that you can beat that difficult economy is to, to specialize in a field, in an area that's growing. And the energy sector is doing just that. Uh, just in the past two years alone, the energy sector has grown by uh, 21 percent uh, per year. Um, uh, that's unprecedented for most uh, sectors of the economy. Uh, in value added alone, just in the past two years, they've grown between 10 and 12 percent per year. And so I want to encourage you to think about um, not just uh, your capstone in terms of this, this next semester, but in terms of what's going to be your, your focus for the job market uh, and beating this difficult economy. Uh, if you're interested in topics like climate change, hydraulic fracturing, renewables and renewable energy, the smart grid, transportation policy specifically re relating to uh, the environmental impacts of transport, clean water and ecosystem policy, then, then this is the capstone for you. Um, we're going to be working on a group paper where my goal for the group paper is to get you to take uh, some, 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 some of the tools that you've learned over the past two years and apply them to providing a report, uh, a policy paper, that you can then take to employers. And uh, you can take that, that report, take that paper and say, look, I, I have the skills to work in a, in a group. I have the skills to work in a collaborative team, and also I have some really great analytical skills. And we're going to be taking all the skills that you learned in terms of microeconomics and in terms of uh, statistics and econometrics, cost-benefit analysis, forecasting, uh, simulation modeling, budgetary analysis. We're going to be taking those tools and applying them to a group paper in an area of your choosing, an area of your interest, uh, where you can take a paper and, and actually show your, your future boss um, uh, what skills that you have. 
uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, honing your skills as well. I mean, we're going to be taking, uh, putting together all the skills that you've learned over the past uh, year and a half to two years here, and we're going to be taking those skills and we're going to be strengthening them and applying them to one core focus uh, in terms of a paper. That's the very purpose of a capstone. Uh, I'm also going to be working very hard to uh, get some really great guest speakers, experts in the field. I'm going to be working to secure some um, uh, some guest speakers from the Public Utilities Commission here in Ohio who have already come and spoken to us in a number of ways uh, throughout, the past, uh, throughout the past couple of years. We're going to be working to get uh, the Vice President of American Electric Power to come on in. Uh, and I'm also working on a project presently with uh, Jennifer Granholm, who is the former governor of, uh, of Michigan. Uh, she's a faculty member now at UC Berkeley, and I'm going to see if I can get her to, to come on in as a guest speaker as well. And so we're going to be working not just uh, in terms of applying your tools, but we're going to be working to produce a paper that can help you uh, get a great job in the future economy and learn from some great experts. So I hope you'd consider energy and environmental policy as your capstone. Thank you so much.